Hey guys, it's Jeff from Pressure Luck. And I'm Banjo, the Norwich Terrier. Also from Pressure Luck. Good job, Banjo. Very good. You got that Queen's accent down perfectly. Now, one of my favorite restaurants ever growing up was this place called Maison Olay on Long Island in Comac. It was in this cute little house, and sadly it no longer exists. They demolished it. It was heartbreaking that day. They had the best fajitas. The best fajitas. And, uh, well, I have to do some homage to Maison Olay and make some of the most amazing fajitas as a pasta in the Instant Pot. Are you up for the challenge? You should be, because actually making this is no challenge at all. It couldn't be easier. So let's go right to the Instant Pot, guys, and make some of the most amazing creamy chicken fajita pasta you've ever had. Maybe the first time you've ever had it in your life. Let's go. We want to start with one large sweet or Vidalia onion, and then slice them up long ways and then into strands about a quarter of an inch thick or so, so it looks just like that. All right, so it's not gonna be fajitas without some peppers, and I like to have three different kinds of peppers in my fajitas, mostly because it just looks super pretty. I want a green, red, and yellow bell pepper, and like my onion, I wanna slice them long ways into strands about a quarter of an inch thick or so. All right, next step. And it's also not gonna be chicken fajitas without chicken. I wanna take two pounds of chicken breasts, and slice them up also into strands about a half an inch to a quarter inch thick, like this. All right, now we're ready to start cooking. Now we're gonna go to the Instant Pot. We're going to add in a quarter of a cup of extra virgin olive oil. So now I'll come to the control panel on the Instant Pot. So I'll hit the saute button and then make sure I'm on the more or the high setting, okay? And after about three minutes of the oil heating in the pot, we're going to add in our onions and peppers. And we want to saute everything here for about five minutes. We want them to soften a bit. Not get super soft, but soften a bit and cook down a little bit. So really just get in there with like a wooden mixing spoon or spatula and make sure all the veggies are coated with the oil. And then we'll stir and we'll set for the next five minutes. All right, and after about five minutes of our veggies sauteing in the pot, I thought they looked pretty. I want to add in three cloves or one tablespoon of crushed or pressed or minced garlic and then stir that around with the veggies and let it saute for about two minutes longer. Okay, perfect. Now what I want to do is I want to add in my chicken. And I want to just stir my chicken around in the pot until it becomes pinkish white in color. I don't want it to be fully cooked, I just want to give it like a decent sear because it'll get cooked once we pressure cook. I'm going to do this for about two to three minutes, so it should look just like this. I want to add in a one ounce packet of fajita seasoning mix. If you don't have fajita seasoning mix, you can use taco seasoning mix. Doesn't make a difference really, but I got this, so I'm going to use it. And I'm going to pour that in there. I'm just going to stir it around to make sure it's coated. Scrape the bottom of the pot as well. Just give everything a good stir here. Great. And now I want to add in my broth. I'm going to add in three cups of chicken broth, and I'm using reduced sodium. And now I'm going to give everything kind of a final stir here, scraping the bottom of the pot, making sure we're good, submerging my chicken and my veggies in the broth, because now it's time to make way for our pasta. Guys, I'm using penne for this, simple penne. It's a whole box or a pound. And I'm going to smooth out my pasta, not by mixing it. I'm just going to press it down so it's nice and submerged in the broth. Some of it's going to peak above, and that's totally fine. And the reason why I'm not adding more liquid now is because when we pressure cook, the chicken and the veggies are going to release even more liquid. So it's going to have plenty in there for the pasta to absorb when it cooks. In the interim, before we pressure cook, just really press down with a wooden spatula or a mixing spoon or something. So just smooth it out until it gets as submerged as you can possibly make it. Again, it's going to mostly peak above just like this. That's fine. It's going to cook beautifully from everything that's going to get released from the chicken and the veggies. All right, let's secure our lid and we're going to pressure cook. There we go. Make sure that I'm in the sealing position here on my lid. Now let's hit the cancel or the keep warm cancel button depending on your model and then hit the pressure cook or manual button depending on your model and we want to go guys for six minutes at high pressure. And now that we're done we're going to finish with a quick release. And the pin just drops so the lid comes off. And there it is guys. I told you the pasta would be perfectly cooked 
and there's more liquid in here now, a little bit more. Look at this. All we want to do now is take like a mixing spoon, the same one as before, and then just stir everything up now so everything's nice and incorporated. Oh, this is absolutely perfect. And there's going to be a little bit of liquid left in the pot, and we want that in there because that's going to serve as the foundation for our sauce. All right, guys, now I want to add in a few final seasonings to the mix. I want to add in one teaspoon of ground cumin, one teaspoon of seasoned salt. You can optionally add in a teaspoon of chili powder. It's going to give it a little bit of spice and a half a teaspoon each of onion powder and garlic powder. Put that in there. I also want to add in two cups or an eight ounce bag of a shredded Mexican cheese blend or taco cheese blend, whatever it says on the bag is fine. And of course, if you know me, I'm going to be adding in some borsin, or if you don't have borsin, you could add some cream cheese, but guys, this stuff goes such a long way in terms of flavor. Uh, if you know my recipes, you know that uh, I'm kind of obsessed with it. A 5.2 ounce package of borsin, any flavor will do. There's a shallot and chive, you could use the garlic and herb, you could use the cracked pepper one, whatever you want. And you can usually find borsin in the supermarket in the like fancy deli section, the charcuterie area. Costco also sells it in packs of three. You can also use any herb cream cheese like an alouette, that's fine too. So now just give everything a final stir. And you could reserve some of that shredded cheese, by the way, uh, for topping when we're finished. Oh, look at how this is all coming together so nicely. <laughs> a cheesy unbelievably delicious looking pasta we have going on here now oh wow and just keep stirring everything until the borsin is totally melded into the sauce shouldn't take very long about a minute all righty now guys if this isn't perfect i don't know what is look at this pasta unbelievable creamy chicken fajita pasta i'm ready to serve this up and then try it out let's put this into some bowls all right and there we go Mm -mm -mm. Get plenty of chicken in there, and the peppers, and the onions, all oh, looking beautiful. Definitely don't skimp on the chicken either. You don't want to skimp on that. Oh, gorgeous, gorgeous. Oh, yeah. And now I'm going to stick a fork in there, and <laughs> oh, boy, oh, boy. It is time to dig in. Look at that pepper on that chicken. Mm, here we go. All right, folks, and there it is, my... Chicken fajita pasta. Look at this. I don't know how many times I've thrown my fork down after trying something, but when I do, it's a really good sign. Guys, it's like a cheesy, creamy chicken fajita with all the fixings on top of it that you'd want, except instead of rice, we have pasta. And we don't have a tortilla. You know what I mean? It's divine. It's an unbelievable dish, and it's pretty with all those different colored peppers in there. Look at the yellow one. Mmm, mmm. Yellow never tasted so good. And also, if you want to put some garnish on there at the end, feel free. Put some fresh salsa, fresh tomatoes that you've chopped up from the garden or wherever. You can do some fresh avocado, some guacamole. If you want to put some, you know, refried beans if you want on top at the end, go for it. I mean, I think it's perfect as is. I don't think you want to do too many things to it, but do it as you would do a fajita if you want. No limits here. You know, I've wanted to make this one for a really long time, and I'm really, really glad that I did. Some things are really worth the wait. Chicken fajita pasta is absolutely sensational. Guys, if you enjoy these videos and these recipes, check out PressureLoveCooking.com. That's my website. All my recipes live there. Uh, get my new cookbook if you don't have that yet. There it is, my cookbook, the step-by-step -step Instant Pot Cookbook. It's an international bestseller, and there's, uh, look, a pasta section, of course, and step-by-step -step photos of every single recipe with the final product shot in every single one, so you don't have to guess what it's gonna look like. Uh, very, very great for visual learners, novices, and experts alike. Uh, and of course, facebook.com slash pressure luck cooking and like that page anytime a new recipe drops, tips, deals on items, things you don't want to miss there. And uh, at pressure luck on uh, Instagram and uh, Twitter, Pinterest, YouTube, follow me there as well. Thank you so much again, guys. And once you make this pasta dish, I'm telling you right now, a pinata of flavors are going to burst in your mouth. It's that delicious. Enjoy. Mm -hmm.